All right, here we are at section 2-2. Two -two. And uh, today we are talking about hitting the slopes, like our man right here, hitting the slopes. Now, depending on how steep those slopes are, would tell you how much fun he's having. Those slopes are flat, like this, and he's going straight. Not going very fast, although his face looks like he might be going a little faster than that. If his slope gets, as his slope gets a little steeper, he's going a little faster. So we're going to talk about slope and how steep it is. Okay. So I know a lot of you guys know slope, and you have your own different definitions of what slope is. Um, many of you know it as rise over run. Slope is easy and fun. All you have to remember is rise over run. Some of you know it as delta x over delta y. That's probably very few of you. Delta is the Greek letter, um, and it means change. So change in x divided by the change in y's. And some of you know it as the ratio from the vertical to the horizontal. That's kind of like rise and run also. Parallel. Those are two lines that don't intersect. So parallel lines are two lines that never cross each other. They go on forever and ever and always, like, like railroad tracks and never, never cross over each other. Perpendicular lines are lines that form a 90 degree angle when they meet. And so you have that little square in the corner when, whenever you see them meet. And rate of change is really the same thing um, as slope but we but we use it sometimes with curves or other things but rate of change is really um, how much one quality changes on average relative to the change of another quality meaning something like this you had a curve that did this and I said what was the rate of change from here to here you would figure out the slope between those two points that would give you that rate of change. So that's that rate of change on average. Okay. So we have uh, the slope of a line. Hopefully everybody remembers that's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But if you don't, it's rise over run. That's the vertical over the horizontal. And uh, so if I took two points, I would do, on this one, I would probably do 7 minus 3 on the top, y minus y on the top, over 6 minus 1 on the bottom. So if I have 4 over 5, and the slope would be 4 fifths. Uh, classification of lines by slope. The slope of a line indicates whether the line from left to right falls falls um, oh I'm sorry the, the line rises from left to right falls from left to right is horizontal or is vertical that this, when you look at these, I always think of, and it's kind of weird to me, I, I kind of think of, that's why I got this guy skiing. This is what happens when, when he hits an undefined slope. When you hit a vertical line, you crash. But I think of this as when I'm on my bike, I'm going uphill, that's a positive slope. If I'm going downhill, that's a negative slope. And if I'm going flat, that's a zero slope. So that kind of helps me to remember that. I like the guy who crashed into the tree and his friend who took a picture of him. Um, without graphing, tell whether these lines are positive, negative, vertical, whatever. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 3 minus the negative 2, so I'm going to have a 5 on top, and 1 minus negative 6, I'm going to have a 7 on bottom. This is positive, M is greater than 0, so it rises 
so we have a positive slope. However, on the other one here, I have 2 minus negative 1, which is 3, but on the bottom, I have 2 minus 2, which is 0. I cannot have 0 on the bottom of a fraction. That is undefined. Okay, undefined. So therefore, it is vertical, and therefore, this is going to happen. This is going to happen to you. So you don't want to let that happen to you. You go ahead and complete the two checkpoints there. Let's see how you do. Pause. All right. Hopefully you got seven thirds on the top one. And maybe you got negative seven divided by negative three. That still works. And you got rises on the second one. All right, slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. Here are those railroad tracks I was talking about. Uh, consider two different non-vertical lines, L1 and L2. Um, parallel lines are lines that have the same slope. So if you have two lines, the slope was the same. However, in perpendicular, you have negative reciprocals or opposite reciprocals of each other. If I said my slope was two thirds and I wanted to know what line would be perpendicular to that, something that had a slope of negative two thirds would be perpendicular to that. Okay? And I got this little picture of Wii tennis. This is what we play in the Emiat household. This line right here, perpendicular. Alright? Um, so, you tell me on these ones, let's get rid of these pictures, you tell me on these ones here, what do we got? Do we got perpendicular? Do we got parallel? What do we have? So, and you'll, you'll kind of see some patterns here. So line one, line two. First slope, I'm going to do five minus negative one and two minus negative three. It's very important when you're finding slopes that these two things right here make a point and these two things right here make a point with the X's on the bottom and the Y's on the top. Remember that? So on this one I have 6 over 5. On the other one I have Y 1 minus negative 4. So that looks like it's going to be a 5. And on the bottom I have negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. What I have is opposite reciprocals. If I multiplied those numbers together, and this is how you check, if I multiplied those numbers together, 6 over 5 times 5 over 6 negative, I would get a negative 1. That's how you know if something is an opposite reciprocal. So if they have negative reciprocals, reciprocals, I don't know if you can read all that, um, they are then perpendicular. Go ahead and take a look at checkpoint number three and see how you do. Find the slope of, of this, find the slope of this, and tell me what you think. Alright, hopefully on the first one you got a slope of two. You did four minus zero was four, three minus one was two, four divided by two, slope of two. Or two over one if you want. Or even four over two, you could have left it that way. On the second one, when I always try to take the bigger number minus the smaller number and make my numbers um, as positive as possible, on, on the second one there, I got 6 minus 5 on the top, which is 1, and I got 24 minus 22 on the bottom, which is 2. Oh, you know what? I got a little bit of an error. Well, let's see. 4 minus 0 was 4. 3 minus 1 was 2, 4 over 2, that's a positive 2 over 1. And on this one here, I did 6 minus 5 and got 1, and I did 24 minus 22 and I got 2. Oh, look, this is 2 over 1, this is 1 over 2. They're not opposite of each other, are they? They are 
they are certainly not opposite, they are the same, and if they are the same, then there is no relationship between them. Uh, they're both positive, so neither is what we'd go with here. Even though my book is telling me that they are perpendicular, and not so. Alright guys, that's 2-2. Two, two. Thank you so much. Have a great day.